All right, if you have weights, let's grab them, make them be light. I think I want to keep working on the, we've done this the last few weeks. We're going to keep adding rear delt work because I know that mine are really, really weak. So grab some light weights um, and having stronger delt muscles and rhomboids, that'll help with your chaturangas as well, which will hopefully help protect our shoulders as we continue to um, practice and keep doing chaturangas, push-ups basically. So we're, we're going to definitely have, you'll see that as a theme probably for a few more weeks until you guys say, I'm tired of rear delt work or these five pounds are getting easy. <laughs> well, that ain't gonna happen. Whichever one comes first. Yeah. And then yeah. let's get started, I guess. And if you want music, go ahead and turn it on. I kind of feel like music through Zoom sounds wonky. It sort of sounds scary. So if you want music, you can turn it on. Welcome, everybody. I'm so glad to have you. It's exciting to see you all. Let's get started in a child's pose. Um, let's do it with the knees together though. That's a little bit more of a low back stretch and I want to make sure our backs are nice and warm before we try these new squats. So go ahead and have your hands out in front of you and pretend like you're trying to drag that mat forward. So that will activate those lats. Those are those angel wings on the outside of your body. So press your hands into the mat and pretend to drag that mat forward and feel that isolation along the upper back muscles. You should also feel your shoulders sort of round away and down. Press your forehead into the mat and your hips back on the heels. It should be an active child's pose and start to breathe. What do you guys think of the name of yoga instead of hit yoga? <laughs> I, I get one giggle. Judson, Judson wants me to rename it yoga. I'm on the fence, but I kind of like it. Keep pulling down. You should really feel these lat muscles engage. Basically around your underarms should be pulling down. Now let's keep those hands kind of where they are. Shift your hips over towards the right some. You're, you might find your shoulders come a little bit out of square. Play with that. If you want to square them off, let, them, let the left shoulder dip. You should feel this a little bit more on the outside of your right hip and definitely more on that left underarm lat area. Keep energetically pushing your hands into the mat and pulling them towards yourself. You can have your forehead on the mat or you can turn and put the left part of your ear. Inhale, let's come back to the center, and let's do that again on the other side. Left hip over towards the left a bit, pushing down. Coming back to the center, let's come up to our forearms and do a little bitty um, puppy pose. Stretching out and along the triceps and the lats. But check out your elbows. Try to have them be shoulders width distance apart. You're going to feel a different stretch. And if you want, you can bring your elbows even closer than shoulders width distance and see what that feels like. Forehead or chin down to the mat. You guys feeling this in your shoulders and trot? I mean, lats. If you want, you can bend those elbows, bring the hands, palms maybe in prayer or not towards the top of the head. Something I learned Saturday in Pilates is apparently I can't stretch my triceps and knit my ribs in. It's yeah. impossible. <laughs> All right, let's walk our forearms out, bringing our hips up. I'm going to meet you guys. We'll skip the little push-up part. I'll meet you on your bellies. We're just still warming up. In yoga, we'll do this. It's, I think it's called seal. I have to have my elbows bent here. If you're really froggy and you want to have straight arms, you can. Pull those shoulders down and away from the ears. Full disclosure, my clock is not working, so if we go till noon, I apologize in advance. <laughs> just a little bit. 
y'all are laughing. You think it's not possible. All right, so keep pulling those shoulders down and away. Now, watch as I energetically, so my elbows aren't really moving much, right? But I am pulling them back, like I'm trying to bring them back to the side of my body. Do you guys feel the muscles on the upper back activate as you do that? Yeah. So in yin, we just relax. We're not relaxing here. We're trying to build strength. This is an isometric strength builder for that area behind the shoulder blades. If you feel pressure in your low back, press the pubic bone into your mat a little bit more. Keep the chest proud like Thor was watching. That's always my motivation. All right, releasing this. Go ahead, shimmy yourself back a little bit if you're a little too close to the top of the mat. Bring your hands like in a little diamond, thumb and pointer finger facing each other. They're gonna go at the top of the mat. This is working on the upper, um, it's actually the lower traps. We're gonna disengage the upper trapezius muscles. Traps are some of the biggest muscles in your back. So press your forehead into the mat. The head's gonna be down. And you're just going to lift, keeping that diamond shape in your arms and in your hands. You're gonna lift your arms and your hands up, maybe in one line, lifting them up and then set them down. Lifting them up and down. Let's do this a few more times. When your forehead is down, it disengages the upper traps. And the upper traps are usually the ones that are overfired, which causes like knots and tension headaches. The lower traps usually are underfired, which means they're weaker usually. And I know my, that's the case for me. And we really got to work on building some balance in the lower trap muscles, trapezius muscles. Keep going. Let's do another five more. One more. Now hold it up here. Keep that forehead pressed into the mat. Holding those hands up as high as your range of motion will allow. You should feel this between your shoulder blades and as low down as where if you had a bra. Now with that forehead pressing down, holding those hands up as high as you can, pull the elbows back. Now go back and make the, the diamond with your fingers. See if you can touch the fingers. I missed. Pull them back again. We're just doing this for five. Your back should be on fire. Fingers touch. Three. Back. Keep those elbows and hands up. Four. Back. Last one. Five. Squeeze. Now we're actually going to lift the upper back and the forehead. Keep it tucked. The chin tucked. You guys feeling this on your back? I hope, because I am. Now set it down. Let your forehead come down. Maybe you go to your ear. Relax it. <sighs> I feel like I went today. That was tough. Okay. Now we're going to bring those hands back in line with the chest. Squeeze the ears, the ears, the elbows together, pressing the tops of the feet into the mat, pressing the pubic bone into the mat. Bring those shoulders down and away from the ears as you reach the elbows towards your butt cheeks, lifting the chest up and proud. Little bit more back building, muscle strengthening. Keep the pubic bone pressed into the mat. If you're feeling really froggy, you can lift the legs. We're gonna hold this here for another five. Lift a little more, four, three, two, one. Set it down, windshield wiper. Oh. Take those arms out wide to a T. Let's stretch out our shoulders a little bit since we had a shoulder request. I'm gonna to go to the left first just for demonstrations. Pick, push that right hand into the mat, swooping the right leg up and over. Left ear comes to the mat. Play with where the best stretch is for your pec muscle. So your arm can be straight out, it can be going up, it can be going down. Play with this. You should feel this along the, the front part of your chest, along the front part of your shoulder. It's also a twist, so it feels pretty good in the low back, in my opinion. Play with your gaze and see where that stretch feels good. Coming back to your belly. Whoo, Nelly, let's do that on the other side. Right arm out to the side. Left arm pushes you up. 
left leg comes up and over. And again, play with your arm. The higher up, more like a Y versus a T. The Y is a bit more like a pec minor stretch. T is a bit more of a pec major. There's actually multiple pectorius muscles, pectorial muscles. I always get nervous talking about the real names of the muscles because I always butcher them. So if you guys are have medical things in the background, don't judge me. Mm -hmm. <sighs> These names. Oh, keep stretching it one more. Come back to your bellies. Hands out in front of you. Last back exercise for a moment. We're gonna join in to a Superman. Channel your inner Superman. Lift the legs, lift the arms, and hold it up here for five, four, three, two, one. Drop it. Catch your breath. Let's go back up for five, four, three, two, one. Drop it. Last one. Come on up for five, four, three, two, one. Drop it down. Say a little prayer that we're done with back warmers. Slide those hands closer to your chest. Plug the toes into the mat. Plug the knees into the mat. Elbows stay into the body as we push ourselves up to this high plank position and let's hold our put plank. You can have your knees down or you can be up on the toes. What we don't want is our booties up in the air or our booties sagging. Holding it here for another five. Hey, orange kitty, four, three, two, one, downward facing dog. Very first downward facing dog of the day. Walk your dog, or you can stay still, yogi's choice. I like to sometimes sway my hips side to side. That kind of gets the hamstrings in the IT bands a little different. Differently, different, different. Take that right hand over towards the left ankle. Let's twist it out with a hamstring stretch. Gaze is under your underarm. Don't forget to breathe. I probably should have been cueing that. Right hand plants down, downward facing dog before we transition over to the twist. Left elbow to that left ankle, calf, knee, wherever you can reach. Don't lock your right elbow. Bringing that left hand back. Let's walk our hands back to the feet. Bending the knees a whole, whole bunch. Let the head hang heavy. Maybe you sway. I promise we're going to get moving. And then push down into the big toes. Suck the belly in as you roll yourself up. Bring the hands up and overhead. Maybe they clasp overhead, make your nonviolent gun, shove your hips forward as you reach your fingertips back a little bit, opening up across the chest, as well as behind the shoulders, lats, one more, and then forward fold. Keep the knees soft. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, walk those hands out the plank. And we'll hold it here for another three, two, one. Come down to your knees. I want to do an exercise. Crystal did this last week, and I love it. And I meant to do this with you Monday, and I completely forgot. So check in. Make sure you have a neutral spine. So your tailbone's not cheerleader booty, and it's also not hyper-tucked. So you kind of want to puff up that space by the low back. Send the right leg out and check in with your left hand to make sure the hips are square. This keeps your core engaged and it keeps your left glute nice and strong. Take your left hand out straight ahead and make sure your shoulders stay square. You should feel your core working here to stabilize you. Take your left hand out towards the left. Hit shoulders stay square. Now we're going to bring that left arm under and through so it's like a twist. 
keep your hips square. Come back, that's one. Let's do four more. Here's two. I always get an awesome pop in my low back. Here's three. Two more. Four. Last one. Five. Bring that left arm back forward. Bring left elbow to right knee. Crunch it in. Shoot it back. Crunch it in. Back. In. Two more. Last one. Good job. Shoot it back out and straight. Make sure your hips are square. Set it down. Hands and knees. Come back to your child's pose. If you don't want to do child's pose, you can also do toe screamers. Because toe screamers are awesome. Shake out your arm. We've been on those hands for a minute. When you're ready, we'll come back to that tabletop. This time we'll extend the left arm back. Right arm checks in with the hip to verify that neutral spine position. And notice if one side is easier than the other, totally normal. Extend that right arm out straight. Try to keep the shoulders square. And then take the right arm out to the side. Now let's tuck it through. Here's one, back, two, back, three, four, and five. Right arm forward, five of those knee to elbow. Five, four, three, two, and one. Shoot it back out. Hold it here for a breath. Set the hands down, set the knees down. Maybe you do cat cow, maybe you do child's pose. When you are ready, I'll meet you in downward facing dog. Let's start the yoga portion. I'm just kidding. This is all kind of yoga. This is all yoga. All right, heels are reaching for the, the ground. Let's play with heels out, toes in, as you press the chest forward. Notice how that feels on the calf. Pressing the chest towards the thighs, one more. Take the heels in, toes out, press the chest in. Inhale, look between those hands. On the exhale, we're going to lift the right leg up towards the sky, bending that right knee, stretching it out. Breathe here. Straighten that right leg. Bring that right leg forward. You can plant the left knee down if you'd like, or you can just come straight into crescent lunge. Bend into that right knee. Keep that tailbone neutral so we're not in the cheerleader butt. Take your hands to your, I apologize, right arm back, left arm forward. I thought maybe I should warm us up before that super deep twist. Bring the hands up, left arm back, right hand forward. Bring the hands up, right arm back, left hand. Up, left arm back, right hand. Up. Hands to your heart center, left elbow to the outside of the right thigh. Bend into that right knee. Gaze can be at the right toes or it can be over the right shoulder. Try to take your ponytail to the wall behind you. Now we're gonna hold this twist, bend the left knee, straighten. Bend, straighten, just for five. Feel your right butt cheek work as it stabilizes you. I think we have two more. Last one. Unwinding here. Your right leg should be on fire. And then plant the hands down. Bring that right foot back. Take your vinyasa. I heard one heavy sigh, so that means that the right butt cheek <laughs> was, was on me. fire. <laughs> and it was. <Yay>. <laughs> Left foot up to the sky, bending that left knee, stretch it out. It should feel pretty good. 
straightening it. Bring that left foot forward. Remember, you can plug that right knee into the mat, totally okay. <clears throat> or we can come to this crescent lunge. Hands can always be at heart center too. That'll help to take some of the intensity level down. Reaching the hands up, but without letting the ribs flare out. All right, let's warm up the twisties with left arm back, right arm forward. Hands back up, right arm back, left hand forward, back up, left back, right forward, up, right back, left forward, up. Hands to your heart center, right elbow to the outside of that left thigh. Remember for balance, I find it a little easier to look down if you're looking up and over the left shoulder, it's a little more tricky on the balance. Let's try this dynamic movement in the twist. Right knee bends, straighten, bend. That's two, three, four, five. Good job. Unwinding here, back to your crescent. One more. Take your hands down to the mat and move through your vinyasa. Walk your dog. Child's pose if you need it. I'm gonna gauge how tired you are. All right. Folks are ready to keep going. Inhale, look between those hands, walk step. Jump forward, halfway lift to this inhale and fold. Sit your bottoms down like you're in the little kindergarten chair and join me in chair pose. Two more. One more. Inhale, bring your hands to your heart center. Exhale, left elbow to the outside of the right thigh. Sinking low. Shoulder, pull that right shoulder away from the right ear. Mine was creeping up, one more. Inhale back to chair pose. Stay here because we can. Take your hands back to your heart center. And on the exhale, five breaths here in this twist. Sink the bottom down low. One more breath. Come back to your chair pose, one inhale. Exhale, holy moly, come to standing, shake it out. Legs on fire, I hope. Okay, let's grab our little weights. Whew, my legs are on fire. Okay, let's grab our weights. So, we're gonna come back to this top of the mat. Our legs are nice and warmed up, I hope, mine are. Shoulders are nice and warmed up, we're nice and ready to get moving. So let's bend the knees ever so slightly. Keep that neutral tailbone that we found in the tabletop um, exercise that we were just doing. And what we're gonna do is bending the knees, arms out to the side, pull them forward, back. You bring them back to your chest, down. So row with a tricep kickback. That's two, that's three, that's four, five, six, seven, eight, two more, nine, ten. Come all the way up, shake it out. Now we're going to try to intensify this and make it a balance challenge while we do these bent over rows with the tricep kickback. You don't have to do it on one leg, you don't have to do it on like one foot with a tippy toe, but when you're, when you're balancing, it forces the core to work a little bit more. I don't know which one would be better, me facing you or me to the side, I'll give you the lateral view. So, option number one, remember we have this mini squat position, arms out to the side, shoulders down and away, 
belly nice and strong. Going back to that same exercise. Option number two is you're more like in a crescent lunge position. Just the, that right toe is there to just help for the balance. Same tricep uh, row and kick back. Option number three is that right leg is the only one on the mat as you row and kick back. So let's go for 10, your choice, your, your speed, but try to do it slow with control. Row, tricep kick back. I'm on five and six, seven, holy moly, why did I say 10? And when you are done, bring the feet back, shake it out. Did you guys feel that work in the right leg a little more? Yes. And maybe the core? When we have lighter weights, because I think all of you guys are strong enough, when we have lighter weights, the ways that you can increase the intensity is making a balance challenge, um, just confusing the brain a little bit more. And that, I like to think, helps stave off Alzheimer's, which runs in my family, so I like to confuse my brain. All right, you ready? Let's do that again on the other side. Left knee is bent. Remember, you can do this in this just both leg position. That's still working the... the shoulders and the triceps. You can do it in a really, really, really light right foot crescent lunge, or you can do it kind of here in this modified airplane pose. Go for 10. Last set. I'm on five. Hallelujah. And once you are done, you shake it out, drop the weights down, shake out the legs, and let's flow for a minute. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhaling, halfway lift. Exhale, go ahead and fold because it should feel good. Inhaling, half lift, bellies in. Exhale, pick up that left foot and pretend you're a flamingo on the beach. Try to kick your own bottom. Now see if you can get your fingertips light. Maybe see if you can bring your hands to your heart center. We're pretending we're flamingos. Now we're gonna pretend we're an airplane shooting that left leg out. Now slight, silently, left foot plants coming back to your crescent lunge. Open up, warrior two. Inhale, peaceful warrior. Sink into that right knee. Exhale, extended side angle. If you notice, I kept my left arm bound. That's just to help stretch across the chest, pull the shoulder down and away from the ears. Sink into that right knee. Maybe the right arm goes out like you're holding a tray for another three, two, one. Coming back up to your goddess pose. I'm going to turn and face you for the better side. Now we're going to go straighten the left leg, bending, making sure the toes are out. Bend both knees, straighten the right. Modified side lunges, bending both knees. Straighten the left, bending both knees, straighten the right. See if you can come down lower each time. Opening up across the inner thighs. This is my trouble area. Let's do this a couple more times. Warming up as well as building heat. Coming back to center, coming up on the toes.
Last one. Straighten everything out. Oh, say a little prayer. Turn the toes in, forward fold. <sighs> that should be like the best feeling, separate leg like stretching on the planet. Do what feels good to you. If you want to make it twisty, go for it. If you want to make it skandasanas, you can. If you want to go upside down, you can. Yogi's choice. These inner thighs. All right, when you are ready, coming back to the center and stillness, rotating towards the front of your mat, bring the left toes forward ever so slightly like warrior one. Suck the belly in and then build your triangle pose from here. So right arm stays down, left arm comes up. Your right arm can be on the mat on the inside or the outside of that right foot, or you can grab your right big toe. So this is like a twist, hamstring stretch, core strengthener. It's basically awesome. One more. Take that left hand down to the mat. Bring that left knee down to the mat. You guys know I love this transition. Left heel out to the side. And we're going to see if we can end up in a side plank on the left. If you want, you can grab your toe to bring it with you or you just say, get the up side plank on the left. Feel your right butt cheek working to hold that right leg up. One more. Bring that right hand down, right knee or toe down, move through your vinyasa, and let's do that on the other side. We're gonna move through that series one time, then we'll get those rear delt works in. Then I want you guys to try a funny balancing because it's fun. All right, so inhale, let's look up at those hands and then we need to build some heat. So maybe you play with froggy jumps forward and back a few times. I guess this is donkey kicks. I said froggy jumps, but I meant donkey kicks. If you wanna do froggy jumps, you can. Whew, my hips were not loving that idea. When you're done, you'll be in Malasana squat at the top of your mat. And if you wanna play with crow, go with crow. If you wanna play with jumping into crow, that's an option. Maybe you play with that. Hanging out here. <sighs> Hoping and praying the inner thighs open one day. Now, push those knees out. Nice crow, Kelly. Pushing those knees out, squeezing the glutes together. Notice how when I squeezed the glutes, my bottom came up some and my knees went out some more. That's the activation we need to come up and shake it out. Whew. Okay, inhale, hands come up overhead. Exhale, forward fold. I almost forgot the left side entirely. That y'all would have walked around in circles for a week. Bring that right knee up. Pretend you're a flamingo, softening the left knee. That'll help you to balance. When your left knee's softer, for, it helps to keep your left bottom, your butt cheek engaged more, which will help you to balance. Now, see if you can bring your hands up. Maybe they hover, maybe they're at heart center. Now we're gonna extend that right leg out. Here we are in an airplane. We went from flamingoing to airplaning. It's quiet as a mouse. Drop that right foot down, crescent lunge. Opening up, warrior two. Flip the left palm, peaceful warrior. and then extended side angle, left elbow to that left thigh. Right arm can stay bound if you want it to. I just like it because it keeps me from rolling forward. Maybe you hold a tray with your left hand. Maybe your palms out saying, mama, give me money or honey, give me money.
Inhale and coming up, five pointed star. Toes out, heels in. Let's come to this little goddess pose. Sink low, shoulders back and down. Sink a little lower. Now we've got those little modified side lunges straight in the left. Bend into that right a lot. Straighten the right, bend into the left. Feel the nice stretch here along the inner thigh as we bend and straighten. Dynamic movements here. They're building strength in your quads and your glutes. And you should hopefully feel the openness in your inner thighs. Make sure you try to keep that, that neutral spine, that pelvis slightly tilted, ribs knitted in. Two more, like one more on each side. Come back to your goddess pose. See if it's a little lower now that we're warm. See if you can keep those ribs knitted in for another three breaths. Two, one, straighten everything out. Turn the toes in. Take those hands behind you, pull them down and away. Let's get a beautiful shoulder stretch as we forward fold. Tuck your chin and see if that helps to disengage those upper trap muscles around your neck. Soften your elbows if you tend to lock the elbows. Your hands and your head may touch the mat one day. If you've got really long legs, that may, may not happen. One more. Dropping those arms down to the side, planting the hands to prepare. Let's play with those little skandasanas or twists that we did on the other side. So if you twisted it out, you can twist it. If you did the skandasanas, you can do that. I want to make sure that you're even. And then we're going to turn towards the left. Build our triangle. So right toes may pigeon toe in a little bit. You can have warrior two feet if you want. Sometimes that causes my low back to give me grief. So play with your back foot and see what helps you to get the hips stacked tailbone down in your triangle pose. Keep in mind, we're supposed to have three triangles. There's the triangle between your legs, triangle between your front leg and front arm, and then there's technically a triangle between my right arm and body. Gaze is towards the right fingertips. One more. Bring that right hand down to the mat. Bring the right knee down to the mat. Slide that right heel out towards the side as we play with that transition through side crow, not side crow, side plank. Suck the belly in a whole bunch. Maybe you can pick your left foot up and join me in this modified side plank. Or you don't have to grab hold of the toe. You can just swoop it up. Take that left hand down to the mat. Take the left knee down to the mat. You can do your modified vinyasa or you can come up on the toes, yogi's choice. And I'll meet you in downward facing dog. How are you guys doing? You want me to amp it up some or is this kind of a good pace for the Monday morning? I'm good. All right, I got one, I'm good. So we'll, go, we'll keep going here. <laughs> <laughs> All I need is one, okay. Oh my gosh, I've only got 20 minutes and we have so much to do. Inhale, let's look between those hands, stretching it out here, pulling the hips up as the heels go down. Feel the hamstring stretch. You really want to stretch your hamstrings before we do this next exercise. Pressing the chest towards the thighs to open up the shoulders and the chest. One more breath. All right, now try to do some donkey kicks forward if you like, or you just jump forward. Toes together, actually I lied, feet, hips width distance apart. Soften the knees a whole bunch as we roll ourselves up. So here we go with those 
Kang squats, K-A-N-G. Your feet are about hips width distance apart and your toes are gonna be out some. Not like we're in plie, but like out some. So that when we squat down, your knees are gonna track naturally over. Hands are behind your head like you've been pulled over for something illegal. Not that I would know what that is, but I've seen it on TV. Okay, so here we are, toes out, heels in. Keep that neutral spine. Keep your knees bent slightly. So this is a full squat, right? We're not in a full squat yet. We're just going to slightly bend the knees, and that helps to keep the tailbone in neutral position. Suck the belly in, hands behind your head, forward fold, just the top part of your body. With your, when your body gets into this parallel to the ground, squat all the way down, bring your bottom up, then your head up. So did you feel your bottom have to squeeze to bring your head up? Let's do this a handful of times, a few more times. So elbows squeezing back, belly in, fold halfway down, bring your bottom down, bottom up, squeeze the glutes to lift your back. So anybody, everybody okay with this? It's not hurting your back, right? Right. Let's do this. If, let's do this a few more times. Chest down, bottom down, bottom up, squeeze the glutes, chest up and down, bottom down, bottom up, chest up, chest down, bottom down, bottom up, chest up. Two more. You guys feel on this in the glutes and the quads? Yes. Come one more. Come on out of this. What do you think? Woo. Awesome. That I felt a whole bunch in the outer part of my hips and my glutes. I liked it. All right. We'll come back to those in just a minute. Grab your weights. Take your feet about hips width distance apart. If you tend to be swayed back like I am, Toes together, heels apart, helps me keep my tailbone down a little bit more. Um, if that's wonky on your hips or your low back, take your feet out wider. We're gonna do a half squat position. So full squat, your bottom's down here below parallel. Half squat or one quarter squat, you're just kind of squatting. So that keeps the bottom working and the quads working. Bend over like we were in that king squat position. Here we are, half quarter squat. Take your arms out, wide slight bend to the elbow for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Drop the weights, bring the hands behind your head, take the toes out, heels in, Kang squat for eight, chest down, hips down, hips up, chest up, chest, hips, hip, that's two, squeeze the glutes, make the glutes do this, not your back, three more, I think I've got one more. When you're done, shake it out, grab your weights. This is a little bit of a circuit. Bend those knees, do those reverse flies, work in those rear delts for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Drop the weights, toes out, heels in. Last set of these. Bending the knees slightly, tailbone is long. Chest down, hips down, hips up, chest up. Ooh, I'm forgetting this. Two. Five, six, seven, 
eight, hallelujah. Last set, those hands behind the shoulders, behind the head, should be working the um, rear delts as well. So it's fatiguing the back body, hopefully. Coming into your squat, mini squat position. Last, we'll do eight. Let's go. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hallelujah. Set the weights down. Roll yourself up and shake it out. Oh, I'm so glad to be done with that. Your arms sore? Because mine are. Let's do a balanced posture. <coughs> Excuse me. We can do tree pose if you'd like. Kickstand, calf, high on the inner thigh. Or you can do a figure four, figure four pose and work towards, towards a toe squat. So you can do a figure four, left leg over the right quad, squatting down. Or if it's in your practice and you wanna practice that flying pigeon, you can go for flying pigeon. The way you do flying pigeon is left leg crosses over the right, you bring your elbows to your shin to make sure your hip flexors, not your hip flexors, your left butt cheek's okay with this. Bring your hands to the mat, wrapping the left foot around the right tricep, and then it's basically crow. You bring your shin to your triceps and practice crow. Or we do toe stand. Or we do tree pose. Nice. Good job, guys. This is awesome stretch for the um, piriformis. If you have sciatic issues, this figure four pose is awesome. Tree pose too, it helps to prep it there. When you're done playing with that side, let's come out, shake it out, and we do it on the other side. So remember with tree, you can do kickstand, calf, high on the inner thigh, if you have your half lotus, you can do a half lotus. Half lotus is that um, basically like you're sitting um, in lotus position. Or you can do figure four pose. Figure four pose, you can stand up and you get the nice piriformis stretch. Or you can bend over and still get that nice piriformis stretch. If you do toe stand, it's a hella piriformis stretch and balance. And if you practice that inversion, the secret to that arm balance is making that right arm hold on to your tricep. If the right, the, not the right arm, the right foot, if the right foot's holding on to the left arm, it makes this posture way easier. You don't have to work as hard because the foot's doing the work. I like cheating. No, I don't, but just in these kinds of poses. Nice, Katie. Good job, guys. All right, when you are done, come out of it. Shake your butt cheeks. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. Shake your body. Come on, just shake. All right, inhale, hands up. Last vinyasa. Exhale, forward fold. Inhaling, half lift. Exhale, take those feet back and take your vinyasa. All right, before we come all the way down to the mat, oh gosh, I've only got a little bit of time. Let's do a little bit more core work before we end. All right, so here we are in plank pose. Can you guys see me? Yes. All right, hips are down. Let's pretend we're like one of those TikTok plank challenge videos. Hanging out here in plank, we're gonna take our right arm to our left shoulder, hold it, set the right arm down, left arm to right shoulder. Hold it, set it down. Right arm to your right hip. Hold it, set it down. Left arm to left hip. Hold it, set it down. Now let's go faster. Right arm to left shoulder, down. Left arm to right shoulder, down. Right arm to right hip, down. Left arm to left hip, down. Right arm to left shoulder, left arm to right shoulder. Right arm to right hip, left arm to left hip. Knees can always be down, right arm to left shoulder, left arm to right shoulder, right arm to right hip, 
left arm to left hip. Last one, right arm to left shoulder, left arm to right shoulder, right hand to right hip, left hand to left hip. Come down to your knees, take your child's pose, catch your breath, cuss my name a little bit, yogi's choice. Hey, but there were absolutely no boats, so you're welcome. <laughs> Thank God for small blessings. All right. From here, we're going to stretch out the hips just a little bit more before we do our final back bend. So go ahead, come to your down dog, and we're going to bring that right knee to the right wrist, setting up for pigeon pose. But this is gonna be an active pigeon. We're not just laying down over that front leg. If you wanna do, since Katie's here, paying homage to Katie, her, her uh, pigeon sit-ups, you bring your hands behind your head and you go down and up. I am not strong enough for that. So, or you hang out here in an upward pigeon because when you hang out up, it helps to stretch the piriformis a little bit more. You can help yourself go up and down. That's what I have to do in order to do these. My back is just not strong enough. Hashtag goals, Katie. So a secret to better back bends is a open hip flexor and psoas muscle. So that's why if you do some pigeons before you do back bends, you might have a little bit more success. Um, I hate to say success, a little more comfort in your back bends. Make sure your left hip flexor is reaching for the ground. If you're feeling super froggy, your hands go up overhead and or behind your head. We're gonna hold this here for another three breaths. Bring the hands down if you raised them. Let's switch sides. I have to walk it out first. Oh, those hips don't lie. Shakira was right. Left knee to left wrist. Make sure that right leg's straight out from those hips. Chest is proud. If you want, do your pigeon push-ups. Not pigeon push-up, pigeon crunches. I have to help myself up. Try to keep your chest up if you're doing this static stretch. That's helping to get the upper part of your psoas. So if you lay down, that's really just getting the piriformis and the lower part of your hip flexor. If you stay up, your psoas is a big, huge, ginormous muscle that helps to connect your upper and lower body. And if you stay up, it gets into that upper psoas more, which for me at least is chronically tight. And when you find some um, length in your psoas, it could provide some relief for the low back. Maybe you play with your hands behind your head for three breaths. Beautiful job, guys, releasing this. Let's do a back bend. Coming to your knees. I'm on a camel kick this past week or so. Take your knees about hips width distance apart. That's two fists, or you can be a surfer, like far out dude. Pinky and thumb. You can be on the tops of your feet, or you can have your toes plugged in, heels up. Take your hands in your yogi pockets. Don't let your butt cheeks clench together. If your butt cheeks clench together, that makes it, the sacrum doesn't move much, but when your butt's clenching together, it can't move at all. So check in, like cop a feel, make sure your butt's jiggly. Rotate your shoulders forward. Create that little shelf for your neck as you lift your chin. And you may just stay right here without going back to touch those heels. In fact, I feel like this feels pretty good. It's stretching out across the hip flexors and the core. If you want to go further, you reach one hand back to the heels, and then you reach the other. Try to keep those hips pressing forward. If you want to go even further, the feet are flat on the mat. If you want to take it to the full expression, your palms are flat on the soles of the feet. Mm. 
when you are done, bring your hands back to your waist, pull yourself up, coming to your child's pose. If you want to do a rabbit pose, you can do that. It's an awesome low back stretch. You bring the top of your head to the mat, the forehead as close to your knees as you possibly can, and your hands grab hold of your heels. I have a terrible rabbit, but I can demonstrate. So little to no weight in the top of the head as I lift my hips up. One more camel pose. I've seen people doing the rabbit where their hips are like straight up. And to me, that looks like it feels glorious for the low back. <sighs> Mobility. All right, we ready? Setting up for that camel pose. Set it up again about hips width distance apart or like surfer dude. It can be a little wider on the second time, but I like to try to keep them hips width distance. Remember your toes can be plugged into the mat or the tops of the feet plugged into the mat. Push those hips forward while still keeping the glutes nice and relaxed. If camel is too much, you can also uh, do uh, lay flat on the mat is actually with your arms outstretched. That's a little bit of a chest stretch. If you have a block or a blanket, you can put something between your shoulder blades. Holding your camel for three breaths this time. After your three breaths, you come out, come back to your child's pose or rabbit pose. And when you're done with that, you'll roll all the way out onto your belly. Long body stretch here on your belly. One more Superman, because we're good for three, two, one. Now, I'm going to channel my inner Mina here. You guys that have been to Mina's class know what's coming. Maybe roll over to your back. And like a canoe pose, rolling over to your belly. Roll over to your back on the other direction. Back to your belly. And then come back to your belly. And flip over to your back. Say a little prayer. What time is it? Holy moly. Legs straight up in the air. I really need to bring my cloth back and make it work. Those are hard, right? Did Mina? Mina made you guys do that, didn't she? Yeah. Yes. Legs straight up in the air or shoulder pose, shoulder stand. This helps to flush out the lactic acid, get all that stuff that we built up in class today back to the heart. If you want to do a different inversion, go for it. You've got your headstand, your handstand, your forearm stand. Child's pose is also an inversion. Bring those knees into your chest. Give them a squeeze one last time. Maybe say thank you to the body that brought you to the mat today. Did all of those crazy exercises. And then extending your body out long. One more long body stretch. And then come to your final resting pose, your Shavasana pose.
Slowly start to wiggle those fingers and toes. When you're ready, you'll roll over to your most supportive side. With heavy eyes, let's come up to a comfortable seated position. Thank you so much for joining me in class today. I hope you had fun. I hope you, you tried something new. I hope you feel this a, a little bit in a good way tomorrow. Y'all go, go in peace. Namaste.